to Sunday Mass with Children. We are so glad that you can join us on this adventure to learn more about our faith. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and inspiring. We are always encouraged by your sharings and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. We started on our Bible adventure last week. We learned that the Bible not only tells of who God is and how much He loves us, it also reveals God's saving plan for us. This week, we will find out how the Word of God, the Bible, still speaks to us today. Let's begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, the Word present from the beginning of time and dwells among us. Holy Spirit, teach us to follow Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing to Jesus, who is the Word. You were the word at the beginning One with God the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our oh Christ What a beautiful name it is
guys, I found something else in the tin. What tin? Remember that old tin we found with the Bible and the letter last week? There was also an old spinning top and magnifying glass in it. Oh yeah, hmm. I remember now. What did you find, Noah? Look! It's a pouch with a rosary inside it. And there's a name and address. Sir, Sir Sarah Tan? If Mr. John Paul Dupont is the owner of the tin, then who is this Sarah? Shall we go visit her to find out? That's if she is still around. Let's check it out. We should return her the rosary and we can ask her more about this tin. That's a good idea. But we better ask permission from our parents. Wow! What an adventure the boys are having! Do you know what's even more amazing? In John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. Now I wonder who or what the Word is about. Do you know? The Word is Jesus. St. John tells us that Jesus was there with God our Father from the beginning of creation and all things were made through Him. But how can this be? Well, the Greek word for word is logos. It not only refers to word, but also thought and plan. When we call Jesus word, it means that He planned everything in creation and they were made through Him. In this way, Jesus is the Word, and Jesus is God. John chapter 1 verse 14 also says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. God became men. God gave us His Son Jesus to live, suffer, die, and resurrect to save us from our sins. Jesus is the good news. Let's see what else the children are learning about the Bible. I can't believe Madam Tan gave us her precious rosary. I can't believe she is 70 years old and so full of life. She said the Bible has helped her all these years and the Bible is God's word. Do you remember everything she said? When I was a little girl, I would go to the park when I was sad. One day, I found this old tin buried under a tree. Inside the tin was a Bible. I didn't know what it was, but the words inside felt like someone was talking to me, someone who loved me very much. Later, I found out the Bible is God's word, God's special way of reaching out to me and touching my heart. It comforted me many times in my life when I was sad, angry, lonely, and confused. When I was an adult, I decided to put the Bible back into the tin and bury it. I prayed that someone who needed God's Word would find the Bible just like how it helped me. I'm so glad it was you boys who found the tin. Isn't it amazing? God's Word is... Forever! The B-I-B-L-E That's the book for me I stand alone on the Word of God The B-I-B-L-E Jesus is fully God, fully man. And that's why He understands how we feel and He speaks to us through the Bible. Sometimes we meet challenges in our schoolwork or in our relationship with our family or friends. There are times when we feel sad, lonely, anxious or confused. Of course, we can always turn to our parents or our loved ones for help. But do you know that you can also turn to the Bible to find out what God has to say to us? It is now time to take out your Bible and flip to these pages. Mummies and daddies, do help your children. Here are some emergency numbers or Bible verses to encourage you. If you're feeling sad, read Psalms 34, 18. Anxious, Matthew 6, 34. Angry, Ephesians 4, 26. 
attempt it. Philippians 4 8. We can also pray with Bible verses. When you are afraid, you can pray with Psalm 56 verse 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Or when you feel like you can't do something because it's just too difficult, you can pray with Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. Isn't it amazing how God can reach out to us through His Word? Now let us listen to a story of a saint who listened to God speaking to her through the Word of God. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. This verse from Psalm 51 moves St. Magdalene of Canosa to teach Jesus' ways to everyone she met. She grew up like a little princess with her brother and sisters in a big and beautiful palace by the river. When her father died and her mother left the palace, Magdalene called Mother Mary her mother. Even when her teacher was unkind to her, Magdalene remained kind and close to Jesus. She wanted to live her life for him, but did not know how to. Magdalene was terribly confused. She followed a priest's advice to listen to God. Through a verse in the book of Tobit, Magdalene heard God calling her to do works of charity. She tended to the sick and wounded in hospital, fed the poor and taught catechism to a deaf boy. Jesus also spoke to her through a verse in the book of Exodus to look to him on the cross. By listening to God's word, she discovered how to live her life. St. Magdalene of Canossa went on to establish the Daughters of Charity, who followed in her footsteps to live for Jesus by caring for others. St. Magdalene of Canossa listened to the word of God and lived it out. She is a role model for us to follow. Let us sing this song to remind us to always turn to the Word of God that guides us to live as children of God.
For this week's activity, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. This week, don't forget to call the emergency numbers in your Bible for some encouragement and words of wisdom. The line is open 24-7 and is never engaged. Do share some of your favourite Bible verses with us on Little Faith Steps. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass Minute. We begin every Mass by saying sorry to God for the bad things we have done and asking the saints to help us do better next time. After that, we chant or recite a very ancient set of couplets asking God to have mercy on us. It has been part of the Mass for over 1,500 years. You'll notice that we start by saying, Lord have mercy, then Christ have mercy, and then back to Lord. That's because God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are asking each member of the Holy Trinity, one by one, to have mercy on us. When we say that God is merciful, we mean that He is kind and compassionate. Asking Him for mercy reminds us to be grateful for His love and forgiveness. That's why we sing, Lord, have mercy, again at other parts of the Mass, like the Gloria and the Lamb of God. So today, listen for this phrase. What are we asking for? What does God give? Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about Jesus, the Word of God. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, 31st January 2021. We offer up this Mass for all those who have not heard the voice of God, that their ears and hearts may be opened. Join us in singing the processional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And so welcome, children, to this fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, as we come to listen to the Word of God, as we come to encounter Jesus in this time of prayer. Let us open our hearts, let us open our minds, and allow God to speak to us, that He may continue to bless us, continue to show us His love. And as we come before the Lord, we know that there are times when we may not have followed God's instructions, that we may not have done what He wanted us to do. For these times, let us turn to God for pardon and mercy. Confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. 
Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honour you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself from among yourselves, from your own brothers. To him you must listen. This is what you yourselves asked the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly. Do not let me hear again, you said. The voice of the Lord my God, nor look any longer on this great fire, or I shall die. And the Lord said to me, All they have spoken is well said. I will raise up a prophet like yourself from them from their own brothers. 
I will put my words into his mouth, and he shall tell them all I command him. The man who does not listen to my words, that he speaks in my name, shall be held answerable to me for it. But the prophet who presumes to say in my name a thing I have not commanded him to say, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would like to see you free from all worry. An unmarried man can devote himself to the Lord's affairs. All he need worry about is pleasing the Lord. But a married man has to bother about the world's affairs and devote himself to pleasing his wife. He is torn two ways. In the same way, an unmarried woman, like a young girl, can devote herself to the Lord's affairs. All she need worry about is being holy in body and spirit. The married woman, on the other hand, has to worry about the world's affairs and devote herself to pleasing her husband. I say this only to help you not to put a halter round your neck, but simply to make sure that everything is as it should be and that you give your undivided attention to the Lord. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his followers went as far as Capernaum, and as soon as the Sabbath came, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. And his teaching made a deep impression on them, because unlike the scribes, he taught them with authority. In the synagogue, Just then, there was a man possessed by an unclean spirit, and he shouted, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus said sharply, Be quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions and with a loud cry went out of him. The people were so astonished that they started asking each other what it all meant. Here is a teaching that is new, they said, and with authority behind it. He gives orders even to unclean spirits, and they obey him. And his reputation rapidly spread everywhere, through all the surrounding Galilean countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so children, as we've heard the word of God, how many of you remember what did we celebrate last Sunday? What did we celebrate last Sunday? Last Sunday was? Word of God Sunday. Word of God Sunday. Well done. Right? And what is the word of God? When we say word of God Sunday, we talk about the scriptures, we talk about the Bible, right? We talk about God's message for us. But today, we want to look at another kind of word. The word of God that is written, that's been handed down to us, but this word of God has to be something which we take and then it becomes our words. The words that we use. In the first reading, we read, I will raise up a prophet like yourself for them, from their own brothers. I will put my words into his mouth. Here, God is talking to Moses and saying Moses was that prophet, right, to lead his people. God gave him the message and he went to do. And God says, I will raise up other prophets to speak my words. What are God's words? God's words, of course, are good words, right? And that is what we all are called to do. When we were baptised, we are also called to become prophets. A prophet is not one who predicts the future. A prophet is one who comes to tell the truth, comes to give God's word to his people. And in that sense, how do we know when something is God's word? God's words are always good, truthful, always loving, and always for the building of another person. So if I was to ask you, what are some good words that you can say? 
what are the words that you may think of? We learn please, right? We learn how to say thank you when we appreciate something. When something is nice, we say that's beautiful, that's wonderful. When we want to show love, we say I love you, right? There are many words which are good words which help us to do what God wants. But then there are also bad words. I'm not going to ask you what are some bad words, right? I'm not going to teach you any bad words either. If you do know of any, probably your parents would have scolded you and say, don't use these words, right? But it's not just the words themselves, but the meaning behind the words, the intention behind the words, whether these words come from God, whether these words do God's work. Good words convey love, appreciation. They build and encourage another person. They show love. Bad words hurt people. Bad words cause destruction. They bring about disunity. They break relationships. Right? When I say, I don't friend you, I don't like you, go away from me, these words do not come from God because we know God is love. And it's not just the words that we say. Sometimes we can say good words, but they don't mean very good, right? Just take, for example, the gospel passage. We see Jesus coming to the synagogue and he meets a man possessed by an unclean spirit. And we know an unclean spirit is not from God one who goes against God. And what did the unclean spirit say? What do you want with us? What do you want with us can be said in a very nice way, right? If you go up to your parents and say, Daddy, Mommy, what do you want with us? How can we help you? How can, what kind of chores can we do in the house? That is good. Or when somebody irritates you and you say, what do you want? That doesn't sound very nice. The words that come from us, it's the same words, but the meaning is different. And so for us today, we're invited to reflect on the words that we use in our lives. Are they God's words or are they like the one from the unclean spirit? something which is going against God's will? Are we building people up, building relationships, or are our words hurting people, causing more disunity? In Mark chapter 7, verse 15, it says, Nothing that goes into a man from outside can make him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that make him unclean. It is not anything external, but it's what's in us. Our intentions, are they loving or are they sinful? The words that we use to communicate with others will be what makes us clean or unclean. And so do you have an unclean spirit within you? Do you need Jesus to come and help you to become more like Him. We may not be possessed, but for many of us, we have our own sinfulness, our own brokenness. Maybe sometimes people have hurt us, and we carry that hatred, we carry that unforgiveness. And that is where we are called to pray and ask God to cleanse us, to cleanse even the words that we use that we may use our lives to go and build that unity. The other thing about the words in our life is not just the intention, but as we see in the Gospel, Jesus spoke with authority. The difference between Jesus and the others that the people felt he is different because he spoke with authority and how did they get this how did he get this authority 
the authority that came by his life, by his actions. He backed up what he said with the way he lived his life. He talked about love, he talked about unity, he talked about mercy and forgiveness, and he lived that out in his life. He lived that out in the way that he went out to reach to sinners, to show them God's love. And so for us too, it's easy to say nice words, but do we mean it? Do we go and do something wrong to our siblings? Right? We go and disturb them, and then we say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But then we do it again. Right? If we say to our parents, yes, I'll do something, but I don't go and do it. Right? I'll stop playing, I'll go and do my homework, I'll go and do the chores. We say, but then we don't do it. Then our words become empty. They may be nice words, good words, but these words are not bearing fruit in our lives. We know that in the Gospels, Jesus gives us many examples about the Word of God especially the parable of the sower, right? When the, when the sower sows the seeds, does it bear fruit? The Word of God, is it bearing fruit in our life? So last Sunday, when we talk about the Word of God, now this Sunday, we are invited to see, is this Word of God bearing fruit in my life, in the words that I use with other people? Is it bearing fruit in my actions to back up that Word? Do we believe that Jesus has called all of us to be his prophets? To be his prophets that God is willing to put his words in our mouths to use us for his work. So today as we continue the Mass, I invite you to pray. Pray and ask, Lord, how do you want me to speak your words? Maybe you take a short time to think with your family members, with your parents, with your siblings, what word can I say to my siblings, to my parents, to my friends, which are good words? Words which show appreciation, show love, words that build the relationship. And so I invite you, after this Mass, to go up to your family and to say these good words. Or maybe just pray and say, God, what do you want? What do you want me to tell my family members? Let us not be unclean spirits, but that we be clean, clean spirits asking, Lord, what do you want with me? How do you want me to be like you, to do your work here on earth? Amen. And so having heard the word of God, let us respond by our words. The words that we say in the creed, let it not just be empty words, but let us mean the words that we profess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus taught with authority and healed with power. Putting our faith in Him, let us pray for our needs, those of the Church and the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that they guide the faithful in the ways of Jesus by their example and their words. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of all nations, that they may use their authority as Jesus did to free people, to heal the sick, and to build up the community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be grounded in God, that each of us, whether celibate, single, married, or widowed, may seek God first in our lives and love others with the love with which God first loves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are stricken with the coronavirus, that God will heal the sick, protect the vulnerable from the virus, strengthen those in health care, and let vaccines be effective and reaching those most in need of it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving, that they may experience God's comforting presence and the loving support of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold silently in our hearts and those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayers and draw us closer to you. May we grow in faith and serve you more generously each day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us a Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, 
so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. So just as Jesus gave us these words to pray to God our Father, let us come and allow this prayer to glorify God our Father. Our Father, Such 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. To you. Behold Jesus, the Word of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And so as we come to this part, I invite you at home as you partake in spiritual communion to pray. Pray especially this week and ask the Lord, Lord, cleanse me, help me to be your prophet, help me to speak your words. Tell me what words you want for me to go and build this communion, to build this unity in my family, in society, with the people around me. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So before I give the blessing, I invite you to take what you have heard today, right, and don't let it be just I, I give you empty words, right? What did I what did I share with you in the homily? To go and think, what are the good words that God is putting into your mouth that He is inviting you to share? How can you show God's love to your family, right? Especially if your siblings, your brothers and sisters, you find it so hard to love, so hard to forgive, okay? Ask and say, God, help me to say those words. Help me to mean them so that my life can bear fruit. The fruit that comes from listening and knowing God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the good news of God's word. Thanks be to God. Precepts are what they say, positive laws. Positive laws are human laws uh, that say you have to do this. The precepts of the church are set in the context of a moral life bound to and nourished by liturgical life. So the way you pray, your spirituality is all tied to this. And so the first precept, Catholics should attend Sunday Mass where possible. The Mass is the principal form of worship where the community gathers, the church gathers, and there we worship God, the Father, in the sacrifice of Christ, uh, in unity of the Holy Spirit. So there we renew our identity as a child of God, renew what it means to be Catholic, and we continue to rely on Christ to sustain and nourish the life of the church. The second precept is to confess one's sins minimum once a year. The gospel calls for a continual conversion to encounter God, but also to recognize with humility our own brokenness. The priest is not there to judge you as a human person. He's there to mediate. It is in this sacrament that we celebrate God's mercy in our life. The third precept is the Easter duty. It's a reminder that at the minimum, we should receive the Eucharist at least once a year. If you go for daily Mass, by all means, 
receive Christ every day. What the Eucharist recalls is the breaking of bread, which Christ gave at the Last Supper. And He says, do this in memory of me. Now, He journeys with us in very tangible form, not in wishful thinking, but in bread and wine. Things that we can touch and see and taste and consume. The fourth precept is about fasting and abstinence. The Bishop's Conference said that Fridays should remain a day of penance, reminding ourselves that Christ died on Good Friday, to pause and to rethink the things that we want to do, the things that we want to have, are they necessary? The point of this corporate fasting and abstinence is to exercise an element of self-denial, whether it, it be uh, computer games, whether it's television, Netflix, be creative in what you want to give up for this day in honour of the Lord. And the fifth precept, the church invites us to provide for the needs of the Catholic Church. Out of our baptism arises certain obligation on our part to make sure that the church, you and I included, continue to fulfil its apostolate. We invite them to be generous to the degree that they're able to. But more importantly, to feel that they want the church to develop, to grow, and to fulfil its mission in Singapore, as a Singapore church. And that's where the sense of belonging, the sense of ownership, that's important in the fifth precept. So the church takes it on herself to say, these are the five things that you should do for the good of your moral life. So the requirement for going for Mass is tied to your spiritual life. The requirement to go for confession is also tied to your spiritual life. Each one is asked to take responsibility for his or her spiritual life also and to continue on this path of conversion. Our church has gone through many milestones in her life and there is much to be thankful for as we look back on the many sacrifices that were made to build the church that we have today. As our church strives to continue to rise above the current, may our hearts burn with love and zeal to grow and enliven the lives of the many people. Let us reignite and shine our faith by supporting our church her mission is still very much growing and now more than ever needs your support.